I'm Jennifer Isabella. And I'm Keith Johnston. Your co-host for Forrester's podcast, What It Means, where we explore the latest market dynamics impacting executives and their customers. Today, we're joined by senior analyst Angelina Jenis to discuss managing well in a hybrid work environment. Welcome, Angelina. Thanks. So happy to be here. So Angelina, we've been working in this hybrid work environment for a little while now. Uh, it looks like it's become a bit of the normal, uh, if you will, uh, but we've learned a lot and we want to talk about what managing well or what managing great looks like in this environment. But before we get into the how, can you just set us up with what it's like, well, what does what does managing well really look like in a great hybrid environment? Generally, managing well means setting the right expectations and then fulfilling on those expectations. What happened when we moved to hybrid work was we did not even set expectations again or reset expectations. So you get perceptions from employees that expectations are being met, exceeded, uh, not being met, um, a whole mess of reactions that continue to linger years after it is excusable because the pandemic came and we should at this point establish new norms. And the reality is, I mean, we've probably learned a lot, but uh, I don't know, the demands, the expectations of of hybrid, uh, particularly as people are rolling in policies and rolling them out. And I I guess there, there is no normal as far as a hybrid policy right now. So what do managers need to do to catch up at this point and, and get to a point where they're feeling like they're doing a great job managing their people, whether they're on site or off site? Yeah. So I usually, when presented with this question from clients, have to take a step back because we can never assume that hybrid in and of itself is the issue, is the cultural issue, is the it- issue between a manager and an individual or a manager and teams. We start from a high level view of tell me about your culture. And then we end up digging deeper and finding that there is a lack of structure to the norms, the behavioral norms, the rituals, the artifacts of that culture that come to life in the hybrid environment. That means established channels for different types of communications. It also means communicating with an individual in the way that they are comfortable and is accessible to them. So I say that because we don't want to jump into solving for hybrid. We want to solve for cultural issues. And a lot of the times that means creating new processes or leveraging technology differently. And that makes sense. But I'm thinking, uh, what is culture in this environment? And then I'm also anticipating that you're going to tell me that uh, the employees have a set of expectations and that's probably going to drive the the things that you need to do to get it right, right? So what are those expectations actually? Okay, well, culture in this environment is still making emotional connections and having shared behaviors and norms. Employees' expectations are that managers will continue to make an emotional connection with them. So understanding my sense of belonging, understanding my need to speak my mind, uh, give input on ideas or the direction our team is heading, um, or be able to work silently and not feel like there's constant notifications or noise that is distracting me, or even to have a proper work-life balance now that logging off looks differently. A lot of that is put on the manager top down and put on the manager bottom up from the team. So we're not saying that the job has gotten easier. We're acknowledging that the job has gotten harder for managers. All the more reason to, as we term it, manage mindfully, take a Zen moment, think about what your team's expecting from you, what technology and tools you have at hand, and how you can meet those individual expectations in a realistic way, and then how you can make broader um, expectations for the team so that you're not overdoing it on the side of working too hard as a manager and not having enough time to get things done. So you obviously emphasize the mindfully 
portion of that statement that you just said, Angelina. So could you just double click into mindfulness in a work environment a little bit here? Right. Because we don't typically propose anything that isn't measurable and mindfulness is not directly measurable. So it's a little tough to work with. What is measurable is the employee perceptions, which is where we started. Um, but what we can do with mindfulness is learn from the practice, which is established, which is academically research, which tells us to be aware of interactions, to be understanding of the purpose of interactions and the power we have in an interaction. So if we are currently using a channel, let's say we're using Teams or Google Meet, and we notice that all of the power is on us. We are saying everything, we are doing everything, and everyone else is sitting there quietly. We realize that this is not mindful to continue in that framework, in that format. And we need to recreate how we have those meetings, how we engage each other, um, and be thoughtful about it. And it's I know it's harder than it sounds, especially when you have huge teams or you have really folks that have really kind of withdrawn into their um, remote locations and don't seem very engaged. But mindful management is as much about the individual relationship you have with each person as it is with the team. So that's why we keep kind of flicking back and forth between what can we do for the team to engage them? What can we do for the individual? So you're absolutely right. It is hard. And we've seen clients, we've, we've seen everybody. Their, their first reaction is it's so hard that let's just get everybody back in the office and everything will go back to normal. But it's not going to go back to normal. Uh, there's a set of expectations that have been created that I just, I don't think it's, we're, this may be the new normal, but I'm sure, I feel like we're still defining what that normal is. So to even get to what a hybrid strategy may work for a company, I feel like the managers, the employee experience folks, and the employees need to get on the same page. Is there a good first step to do that? Yes. I mean, the first step is at every layer of the organization, the team, the department, and even at the executive level, we need to start documenting what we think are the best forms of communication, what's appropriate, how we want to address the perceptions on EX surveys where employees say, I, I feel like I'm not being heard, or I want to contribute ideas, whatever that is, tie that into your plan for how you collaborate and how you communicate. That happens top down, but then it also happens bottom up because we know every culture is unique within an organization. So each team will have their own norms. But we really need leaders to set the examples because where they are is where everyone's going to go, where the attention is going to go, and where the rituals are created. And I know I keep using these terms, these cultural terms, behavioral norms. That's everyone may act differently, but we kind of have these shared ways of behaving. Rituals, that's the sort of things we repeat. So uh, where we chat when is a ritual. And then artifacts. I mean, if you look at the team chat history, you have a bunch of artifacts that reflect the culture, how we talk to each other, whether we joke or not, how formal our language is. All of that builds the culture. And the interesting thing about the digital environment is it is capturing our culture. It is capturing transcripts of our meetings. It's capturing our chat history, how often we meet. All of these things can give us a picture of the culture and tell us what do we need to change. Are we a culture of meetings or are we a culture of uh, reaching out as needed? Are we a culture of skip level conversations or are we a very hierarchical culture? And if we want to, for example, move faster as an organization and evolve, we actually do need to get into these details of how we work together because they're getting in the way of making those big changes. I like what you're saying, Angelina, because... Uh, you know, the word culture can sometimes be squishy for leaders. You know, uh, everybody knows that they need it. It's just hard to get there. But the way you're describing these characteristics, they seem to work like a system. And there's actually a process, you know, in defining the purpose, 
you know, figuring out what our norms are going to be, that those will establish the rituals that are most important to us. And then, you know, those artifacts that you talked about. So, um, I feel like hybrid can work for anybody. You just have to put in the work, right. And just to decide that you're going to put in the work. Yeah. So now that we've talked about that system, let's go back to mindful management. So we could be very rational about how we look at the system and how we change the system, but we'll leave behind all of the emotions at play. We'll lose people. Um, so it then it comes back to the mindfulness that's about cultivating compassion. It's about going off and maybe on the weekend thinking, what does it mean for me to be a leader? What what am, What is my purpose as a leader? Bringing that back into how we establish lines of communication, how we make decisions, how we collaborate. Um, so again, we yes, we're able to see the system, build the system. We have all of these artifacts all around us now. The office is still an artifact. The office still tells us, I mean, I can look up from my desk and see you, Keith, across the floor. So that says something about our culture and how open it is. Um, but we also need to bring in the emotional factors and, and that's where the, the mindfulness comes in. It's not, some folks are natural mindful managers. They pick it up from other parts of their life and others have been maybe conditioned to live in the rational because they've moved up in an organization by getting things done. So the, again, it's about being mindful. Where am I currently? How am I perceived by my employees? And how can I think less about extracting from them information and decisions and work and more coming to them on their terms, meeting them on their terms and establishing norms around that? You mentioned the word condition, and I like that because you really have to condition your culture to abide by this hybrid strategy because I feel like we see lots of examples where either the the clients don't have the stamina to make it to this new norm, you know, or they snap right back to the old thing because they don't have enough managers to maintain, you know, this new world. Right. And we have observed that culture change in large global organizations takes seven years if it's successful. Oh, wow. Uh, we see that phenomenon actually across a lot of different transformations. We see it in CX transformations too, interestingly enough. Not surprising, actually, because CX transformation is often a huge culture transformation. So, yeah, seven years. But, hey, we've already been living in the hybrid world for four years. We're halfway there. <laughs> yeah. What's another three? Are the mindful management, this concept, the you know levers that you can pull, is that new for hybrid or is this something that should have been present? before we made this transition and it's just, it's sort of uh, in the spotlight because it is a transition, a transformation that we're going through right now. Yeah, let me um, rattle off some of the rules for mindful management. So there's capture your team's unique culture, uh, shape meetings through mindfulness, which we've already talked a lot about, define channels for specific engagement types. We've mentioned that. Keep rules simple for self direction. So I'll pause there because to your question, has that always been the norm in management to keep rules simple for self direction? Probably not. We've seen examples where organizations have course corrected here because the rules were complex, very weighted down, especially in highly regulated environments like government. They're actually starting to simplify the rules so that people can create their own hybrid experience, essentially. It's a, clearly a very individual experience. Um, and so these rules ha are really pushing what we thought to be true for 50, 100 years of management science um, to, be, to be better humans, to be human-centric, ultimately. In this research, we actually uh, use our Consumer Voices platform, and you got some pretty interesting insights because they're they're basically quotes, you know, from folks that you know that we mine for for good data. Can you talk about some of those examples that illuminate the the mindfulness side of things? 
Yeah. So huge list of quotes with uh, employees across industries globally giving their views on their managers. And in some cases, managers defending their views on how they were managing folks. Um, and we heard a lot about either amazing managers or managers that were not giving the support or direction or help needed. Um, that kind of tale of two cities is obviously rampant in a lot of organizations because, as I said, people become managers either because they want to be managers or they just want to move up in the organization. So we need to establish norms around what it means to be great managers in hybrid so that we can standardize the experience a little bit. Um, and my team, the Future of Work team, goes on and on about how we tend to overlook education for managers. We don't need to go into that, but everyone should have at least a minimum viable management experience, in my view. The other thing that we saw in the data were some managers said that they have their own ideas for how to be mindful in management, little tools or ways that they've kind of kept in the back of their head. Is this a good scenario? Are we communicating effectively? Um, one said, I have tried to look at the people process and then technology in this order. So when they're establishing hybrid norms, they think people first, what do the people want? How can the people thrive? Processes, what kind of processes should we establish? Again, the right sides it so people know where to go, what to do, but they're still creating their own hybrid experience. And then lastly, technology. We have so much technology and tools to solve the problems, but we gotta make sure we start from what problem we're solving versus, hey, there's a new capability that we can all use. Let's go jump to that channel and see who comes along and adopts it. So something that stands out with a lot of the research that your team uh, does, and it relates to what you just said, is that I feel like, and actually you know, that there's a manager's perception of how well things are going. And then there's the employee's perception, which is what, you know, these quotes just kind of scream that idea that there's a tension there. Once you get this going, how do you keep calibrating to the goal, which is to have a great experience for both the manager and the employee? Uh, is there is there a method or a way that we can know that number one we're making progress, but number two, it's it's sticking, you know? So maybe it doesn't take seven years to get there. Yeah, so we can measure that. We call that culture energy. Um, just like mindfulness, it's hard to measure culture, but we can measure culture energy, which basically says, uh, are the employees' perceptions around, is this culture committed to me? Is this culture adapting? Is this culture motivating? And is this culture purposeful? So we can look at the varying levels of culture energy or those varying perceptions between managers and individual contributors. And we, when we do that, we always see a gap. The leaders, the leaders, the managers always think that a culture is adaptable, moving to new channels to communicate and it's so effective or wow, we have so much purpose, we are really living our values, or wow, I'm really getting what I put into this, it's so motivating. So there will always be that gap, but we will see improvement if we manage more mindfully, if we address what we see in our EX surveys uh, in a mindful way. Um, and so hopefully we can start to see that gap shrink a little bit. Uh, but the big thing here, the big aha for us is, your experience as a manager is not the individual's experience, and we can measure that to be true. Um, so you must constantly be trying to improve the experience to fill that gap. So that makes great sense, Angelina. And I'm glad that there's a tangible framework. So in your research about the mindful manager, you had an assessment for the manager specifically. So I'm guessing that we want to do that assessment and then we also want to have the culture energy so that you know we can we can specifically know we're making progress with our managers and its impact on culture and energy overall right you got it and i know it's a lot of assessments i know foresters <laughs> always throw in assessments out there but hear me out so the mindful manager assessment is like 
I'm going to take this personality test. I'm going to take this very simple, quick little quiz to understand where we are. Culture energy is I'm going to see where my team is and then we're going to meet halfway. So we have the two assessments so we can understand the employee view and the manager can judge themselves on everything. And then we, of course, have exercises you can go through um, to figure out how to create that mindful management around hybrid work. Um, and the nice thing about those exercises is they dovetail nicely into guided sessions, conversations with us to give you actionable next steps. So it's all it's all in one place. But yeah, you need to have that comprehensive view. I'm I'm sorry. It's a lot of work to be a manager. But you need to understand what the employee is thinking and you need to understand what you're doing and how that's impacting what the employee is thinking. Um, the good news is there are, in all of these emotional perceptions, there are very rational next steps where we have seen through the data uh, the outcomes you're hoping for, like driving employee engagement, happier employees, achieving your goals, all the good stuff. Yeah, but but I like that and I know it's, it seems like a lot of assessments, but you are really, you're getting to the point that you're, you're really measuring, you're finding the drivers to get that alignment between the manager's perception and the employee perception, which to me seems like the friction point in this whole thing. Right. And I'll be honest, when this report came out, no managers read it <laughs> because no manager wants to go, let's see if Forrester can tell me how crappy I am as a manager. But what did end up happening was I would get questions around culture energy or the four characteristics of culture, how to describe culture. We dig into the problem and then I'd say, it sounds like you have a good idea of what your employees are asking for and your managers think they're giving them to you. So maybe we need to look at the managers, have them be a little bit more thoughtful about what they're building for their teams. Um, so we ended up at that report. So Angelina, I feel like we just scratched the surface of a very deep body of research that you've been working on. So where can folks go to maybe learn a little bit more, uh, maybe ex experience you talking about this um, with all of your passion as well? Yeah, I will be at CX North America this year. Uh, I'm helping to run a whole track on leadership. So we're going to really work to connect the dots on leadership and AI, culture, uh, organizational effectiveness. Um, so I'll be there the whole time. So you'll see me there. Um, please grab time with me if you have questions about culture and mindful management. That sounds great, Angelia. It sounds like uh, this whole managing in the hybrid world is a work in progress and uh, you got the goods to get us there. So we'll see you at CX North America. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. If you like what you heard today, subscribe to Forrester's What It Means podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or your favorite podcast player. To continue the conversation, follow Forrester on Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn, or drop us a note at podcast at Thanks for listening.